My grandmother was an expert in fostering reflection. And because she was the daughter of enslaved people, she understood the power of narrative. Her father would talk to her every day about what he went through as an enslaved person. And she had these various strategies and tactics for getting me to understand things. One of the things she did when I was younger, she said, we're going to go to Bowling Green, Virginia. She said, bring your best suit. We got down there. It was the middle of the summer, a hot day. We start walking down this dirt road. I said, Mama, where are we going? She said, don't worry. We got to this field, and there was a shack in the middle of the field. She said, we're going to go inside this shack, and when we go inside this shack, you're going to hear something. I said, OK. I was standing in there, and I couldn't hear anything. And then I noticed that my grandmother was crying. I'd never seen her cry before. And when she started crying, I started crying. She squeezed my hand, and she said, stop crying. I said, but I didn't hear anything. She said, yes, you did. I said, no, Mama, I didn't hear anything. She said, yes, you did. I moved to Montgomery in part because that's where the courts were. At the time when I moved here, I didn't know about the history of the slave trade. This was a community shaped by slavery. And when I started realizing that, things began to change. I'll sometimes walk down to the river, which was a portal for the domestic slave trade. And I was sitting down there one day thinking about my grandmother. That shack was the slave cabin where her father was born. And all of a sudden, sitting there, it felt like I could hear the sounds of enslaved people coming into that river. And I understood what my grandmother was teaching me. I can hear it. When I go into jails and prisons, there's a sound. And it's the sound of suffering. It's the sound of agony. It's the sound of misery. And when you hear that misery, when you understand that, it will push you to do things that you won't otherwise be able to do. There's a history of untold cruelty that hides in silence in this country. And I think there are things we can hear in these spaces that can motivate us. We are so thrilled, so thrilled that so many of you are here we think uh, something really important has to happen in this country. Uh, we think we've got to change the narrative when it comes to race and racial inequality. I don't believe that people who live in Alabama, I don't think that people who live in America are free. We're going to ask you to do something brave today. We're going to ask you to go to lynching sites and bear witness. We're going to ask you to go to lynching sites and recover a part of this history that has been hidden. We're going to give you jars, and we're going to ask you to go to these sites and to put the soil in the jar and to honor and remember the lives of these victims lost. When you go into these sites, sometimes they're uncomfortable. They're places that feel very desolate. They're places that feel even a little menacing. And so it is, in many ways, an act of courage and bravery to go back and do it.
On January 2, 1901, a black man named Louis McAdams was lynched near Wilsonville. Mr. McAdams had been accused of attempting to murder a prominent white merchant. The vast majority of documented lynched victims never had a chance to stand trial for their alleged crimes. And like Mr. McAdams took the presumption of innocence with them to, to the grave. When we bring these jars of soil into a space like this and we put them on display, we just make tangible, we make visible this history of terror and suffering. And we would resurrect the lives of these people who have been forgotten, who were never honored, who were never protected. When I see the jar, it tells its own story. There's a variation in color down on the Gulf Coast where it's sandy and light, in the Black Belt where it's really dark and rich, and the northern part where the clay is red. There's this geographic story, but there's also a story about our history. There's sweat in that soil, the sweat of enslaved people. There are the tears of people who suffered when they were being brutalized and lynched. There's the blood of these victims. But there's also hope in that soil.